smart. We've all heard of the word smart. But do we really know what it means? Here to explain is Dr. Richard Nixon from Friends of the Earth in Scotland. What exactly does smog mean? Well, people may remember the smogs of the 50s and 60s. They were caused by the smoke from chimneys building up over the city. Today, we've got a very different kind of smog. We've, we've done a really good job getting rid of big smoking chimneys, cleaning up industry. But what we've got is photochemical smog, which is rather more insidious because you can't see it, but it's still doing you damage. And Photochemical smog comes mainly from car exhausts. Chemicals in the car exhausts mix together and in sunlight, on a day like today, they can form ozone and other chemicals which form this smog which blankets the city, makes it seem quite hazy. If you go up in the hills and look out over the city, you'll see a sort of brown haze and that's the smog and the nitrogen dioxide there. So on a day like today, it's fairly clear that uh, the sun's coming through, there's not much cloud. What will be the smog? level, the pollution level. Well, today we're quite lucky because we've got a moderate wind, so that's going to blow the, the chemicals away. They're going to mix together, still going to get the sunlight, but it's going to be further north where the wind blows them. And ozone and the other chemicals are going to form up there, and they may well do damage to trees, to wildlife up there, to people living up actually outside the city. So this is a problem not just of Glasgow cities, but the whole of Scotland, really. So what, what damage can smog do to people? Well, there's, there's a number of different elements in smog. In the winter, you quite often get a, a series of still days, the weather's quite still, and you'll get a build-up of smog, and that can, that can exacerbate conditions like asthma, hay fever in summer, and things like bronchitis, emphysema, so lung conditions. Um, we've seen in the past 20 years, we've seen a six-fold increase in the number of children leaving school with asthma, and that's almost certainly linked with exhaust fumes. So that, that, that's the sort of problems that we're looking at. Um, on, a, on a regional scale, Exhaust fumes also contribute to acid rain, which is killing off fish in locks, destroying trees. And on a global scale, of course, traffic fumes are contributing to the carbon dioxide problem, the greenhouse effect, climate change. So on all scales, it's pretty bad news. You've actually written a paper on the effects of pollution in Glasgow. That's right, yes. We've, we've looked at levels of pollution around Glasgow. We've done some of our own monitoring. And I can tell you, we're sitting here in George Square. It seems quite a pleasant place, not, not too busy with traffic. But the traffic, the, the pollution builds up over the city and the results that we got for here are actually twice as bad as EC limit levels for one particular pollutant. So, you know, it seems very pleasant sitting just here, but as you say, the air is not, not as clear as it seems at all. What, what are the levels? What are the, the levels? Well, the, the, the levels are quite technical, but the, uh, the level that we found here was 94 parts per billion. The limit is something like 50, so it's twice so as it's much. way over. Yeah. Way over. That's for one particular pollutant. Now, one of the problems is that we simply don't know for most pollutants what the levels are because they're not measured and you know, that's, that's a disgrace really. There are cancer causing chemicals, there are particulates that may be causing cancer, may be killing people off that are coming out of car exhaust and we simply don't know what the levels are like in our cities. Now I say cars are a lot greener nowadays, I mean are they just paying lip service? No, no, that's certainly true. Uh, there's some concern about diesel because it's hard to clean those up but Catalytic converters are going to make a lot of difference to petrol engines. They will clean up the smog problem, but only in the short term, because the projections are that the traffic level is going to double. So even if you cut, if you cut 20%, 30% off the emissions, if you then double the number of cars, you're, you've increased the problem again. So really, it's a, it's a nonsense. It's a, a short-term technical fix. I'm not, I mean, more and more uh, nowadays, uh, in America, you don't see it so much over here, people wearing smog masks. You see it in London. That's right. Uh, it's getting quite common for cyclists now to wear masks. And some of them do a little good, some of them probably don't. I find that they restrict my breathing so much that I'm gasping anyway. So, so you actually wear one? Uh, occasionally, yes, for right. cycling, yeah. Only for cycling. Would you wear one if you're walking? I might do. There, there are certain streets in town which are pollution black spots where, you know, it really is, you can, you can feel it, you can smell it, and it's... Very if you were to go into uh, a shop to buy a smog mask, I mean, what type should you look for? Well, there are very simple ones which are just like dust masks, they're really no use at all. If you want the best protection you can get, and it's probably not really very good, it's one with uh, activated charcoal in it, because that will actually absorb things like the hydrocarbons, benzene, which is a cancer causing chemical, so that, that will actually absorb that for you. Yeah, can you give you any idea how much a smog mask would actually cost? Um, they're anywhere from a few pounds upwards to 40, 50 quid. So, what can we actually do to cut down on what is causing the smog? Well, th there are three things. First of all, we need much better information. We need monitoring in the right places, which is one of the arguments at the moment. We need monitoring for all the pollutants that are causing concern. 
not just one or two. Secondly, people need to take action. People drive cars, and it's cars that are really causing this problem. So everyone can do something. Just think of your journey is really necessary if you can do it by some other means. Yeah. And thirdly, authorities around here are thinking of building more roads. So they claim they're going to build more roads. This is going to take traffic out of the, out of the city, but everyone knows that if you build more roads, it generates more traffic. So no more roads. That's that's one of the big big solutions. Now the government um, operate a free phone-in to tell you about the pollution levels. That's right. Now, do you think that this is a their token gesture? Well, it's a very, very small step in the right direction, but it's at the moment it's counterproductive. At the moment it's actually dangerous, because if I rang it up today, it would tell me that the levels in, in Glasgow are very good, and it could tell me very good or good every day of a whole year, even in this spot, and still the levels would be well breached. So, it's very misleading. Do you feel the government could do more? Much, much more, yes. What type of things? Certainly investing in monitoring. And the, the right idea is to give that information to the public, to tell them what it means, to give them health advice. That's what they're trying to do. But if they could just do it just a little bit more honestly, if they could just say bad when they mean bad, yes. and not say good when they mean bad. And what about Friends of the Earth in Scotland? What are they doing? Well, we've got a big campaign coming up on air pollution. We're going to do some more monitoring. We're going to produce a report on the levels of air pollution because there's no real comprehensive bringing together of all the results that have been over the past few years. And we're going to put down policies that we think will do something about this problem. And I hope that councils will take these things up and people themselves will take individual action. Dr. Richard Edson, thank you very much for coming in. All the best for the future. Thanks.